Okay, so, uh, first things first, uh, what you're gonna make, did wanna do is make three new layers, um, depending on which building, uh, you want your, uh, you know, like, corresponding to the amount of, uh, places you have in, a in the level or area, you make frames for the inside of the houses. And um, in this tutorial, we're going to be designing the inside, but I'll be showing you some stuff that should, uh, you know, make it easy. I feel like it's kind of unnecessary because you viewers, I'm sure, are smart enough to do this on your own. But, um, you know, I'm going to, I'll get to some other stuff. It'll lead into the next tutorial, trust me. Okay, so first uh, place you're going to start with is the store. We're going to be using tools or, you know, items from the library toolbar. And, um, by using those, we'll cut a lot of time on this tutorial by using objects already, uh, given to you for free via the Make It So Multimedia Fusion 2 and 2.5. Um, I went to Miscellaneous, that was wrong. Miscellaneous 2 is what I'm supposed to go to. And, uh, they have all sorts of RPG items you can use. Uh, let's go to Furniture and uh, floor panels. You already have floor panels uh, made for us. I could, you could totally make your own, but um, you know, they just uh, gave this to us for free. And once it's done, uh, you can duplicate it. So that, uh, you know, they all work the same. And another thing, when working on uh, the inside of a building, um, make sure everything is on one frame. I don't really do that until later in the video. It took me five videos to make this one. Last video was seven videos to, you know, or recording sessions to, uh, make one video. So, um, making RPG is a hard. It's just kind of time consuming based on the quality you want to have in, uh, your game. And, um, yeah, so make sure everything is on one layer. And, uh, objects you want to collide with, um, you're going to have to convert all the items from the toolbar that you use into active objects. Everything here, I think, is a backdrop object, which the character, um, can't really collide against, which, um, I find to be really, really stupid. No offense, but um, I'll show you how in a second. Uh, first off, once you get everything set, if you're wondering why I'm putting dresses there inside of a store, um, I always you ever wonder like where the shopkeeper like keeps their inventory and stuff when they sell it to you. I mean, like seriously, um, like do they just have a place out in the back? Do they keep it like? under the uh, reception desks like um, you know you just don't know so that's why I put those there um, they don't really have a relevance at all and uh, so this is my little setup um, the clerk will be behind those desks right there but your character won't be able to pass them well they are able to now but uh, here's what you do you select that use the selection tool copy and uh, leave out, then you're going to want to pull up an active object. There you go. And paste. And uh, the little diamonds in there, clear that out. And uh, it doesn't clear the uh, table because it was selected. It's okay, and there you go. This table here is already active, so we're just going to delete that. Since we already have an active table, we're going to delete these two. And duplicate. Yeah, different. Um, I'm not sure if I explained this enough, but the difference between duplicating and cloning is, if you clone an object, it acts. Com you can control everything it does um, individually. But if you uh, duplicate it, it'll do everything that the first object um, does. So yeah. 
and vice versa if you edit the uh, duplicated item it'll uh, affect the first item like if you uh, edit anything from the other item so delete those this is now active object um, bring it over here yeah so like I know like um, y'all don't need an interior decoration uh, tutorial for y'all's RPG games y'all can do it however y'all want um, I don't know I'm just trying to give uh, y'all some insight on uh, how I'm doing it I'm just showing y'all how, how I'm doing my RPG engine I might use this uh, in-game stuff to uh, just uh, shorten like, the make of my game otherwise um, I'd uh, just make the objects myself the objects are free to use and to give it a more 3D look to make it uh, since everything's on the same layer you're gonna control the order that uh, they are on the plane I'm not sure exactly how it works but within each layer for a level I guess there's many layers or something where you can uh, control uh, individually like uh, you know uh, thing Okay, let's just say you can set some items behind other items by controlling the order they're in. That's the best way I can explain it. But if they're on separate layers, then uh, your your character's on another layer. And um, then uh, they won't be able to uh, collide. So that's why we got to keep everything on one layer so make sure the character can collide with them. Yeah, the wall is also a backdrop. Um, I'm going to show you in a second where I do this. I m made the wall a backdrop, but that did not work so well. I'm not sure if it's because it was on a separate layer or there's just something wrong with backdrop items. I'm um, pretty sure it's because it was on a separate layer, but um, I couldn't collide with it. So um, I had to make the wall a, an active object. Okay, and eventually I uh, fixed that. So now what we're going to want to do is uh, thing. Okay, sorry, I kind of lost my place there. Now let's see what we're doing. Active object. I think we are. Yeah, putting in NPC. Um, sorry, uh, this is pre-recorded and I'm kind of lost at the moment. So we're going to bring in our NPC character, the storekeeper. Uh, if you're wondering why all the uh, little sprites there had names and stuff, um, I was originally going to make a RPG type game like uh, Penny Arcade Adventures on the race like Precipice of Darkness. If you haven't played it, it's pretty great. Um, Okay, I ran into this problem where uh, I cannot make the background transparent because it was white. What you're going to want to do is click on that fish thing up there, transparency, and um, go up and fix uh, and click uh, whatever that says right there. And uh, there you go. Um, I want to increase the size so that it's proportional. Don't want the uh, storekeeper to be that small. Oh no, he's on the table. Well, let's just move him back to uh, or using order, and there you go. He's behind it. Yay. And because he's a... Uh, well, you know what? Let's edit him real quick. I don't like the uh, red mouth flip thing. Let's get the color of his skin real quick so we can cover that up. And there we go. Now let's run the frame. And um, later, uh, 
I will be um, showing a later I will show how to do an inventory system and how you can buy stuff on the storekeeper but um you know that won't be till quite later into uh, the tutorials I'm not sure how much I'm gonna do but I will you know do enough so that you get a feel for the engine um, that I'm using for my game like it'll have a unique inventory system and stuff that's easy to uh, make and um you know I don't mind sharing that with y'all okay so now uh now that we have that let's work on another NPC character okay now this one I will teach you how to uh add a well I'm pretty sure you know how path movements work but how this will work uh This character, uh, let's fix the proportion real quick. Uh, we can, we're gonna set a pause that, so that you'll have time to talk to them when you enter the, uh, store. Now we're gonna edit. And, uh, move that down. And, uh, then we're gonna set the speed. Make it kind of slow. I put it around, what was it, 12? No, 6. Something like that. Loop the movement. And uh, I don't think we can set a pause there. So we're going to set one at the beginning of the loop. Click there. Go to set a pause. Just give me a second. Set a pause. And, um,. Make it two. Oops. Um, let me go edit that. I need to do the whole transparency thing I showed you earlier. And uh, once I get that fixed, uh, there we go. There's this weird white line for when they were walking down. I'm not sure what's up with that. I guess I'd have to erase it myself by zooming in. Other than that, uh, you know, it still doesn't look that bad. Um, I think at the end of the video, I'd like to show you a clip of what I was trying to use these sprites for. Um, you know, I'll never release the game, so I'll, in this video I'd like to, uh, show you a bit of my first RPG that I attempted. Before that, I had a turn-based engine I did. I had it on my set a few times, but I deleted it, uh, like about twice already. Because, I don't know, I was a little embarrassed of it. <laughs> But uh, the engine itself worked pretty well. Uh, dang, let me plug in my computer before it, uh, the battery dies. Okay. Now, oh, and then another thing for if you move your character from above the matches. Um, to lead the uh, level, you're gonna need like a door or something, or I I'm just gonna use a carpet. I won't use that carpet in the final game, but you know, just saying, you're gonna want to use something else, or just gonna want to make it an active object so that you can uh, when you step on it, you'll leave the that uh the store and do that for uh this for when you uh collide with the door it'll take you here to the store now yeah um, I'm gonna show you how to um how to save your how it'll save your progress and your items and stuff whenever you leave in and out of there um, but that's pretty much uh, it on uh, how you uh, progress through levels and stuff um, and now, uh, here's a, uh, yeah, so, uh, this is, was my first RPG, kind of, um, as you can see, the houses, everything, the grass, the road was made by me, uh, the sprites were made by Informatsu, and, um, this here that you see with the, uh, the text, the pictures, and, um, 
I was gonna have a name input system, but I decided to kind of bail on that. And uh, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more. And uh, goodbye.